Hey everyone, it's me again, Chicken Noodle. This is the third video in the Coaching Casual series, and in this video we're going to be talking about crowd control effects, how crowd control effects work in some open world content, talk about one of the most important mechanics in the game, the defiance bar, and lastly, how you can mitigate crowd control effects that are applied to you. If you don't know what conditions, boons, and effects are, check out the second video in this series. I'll put a link down below. The next two videos in this series will be about understanding skills and skill types, really putting the first few videos of the series into action. So subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get updated when those drop. Crowd control, sometimes called CC or controls, are effects that disable actions, movement, or skills. CCs fall into two different categories, soft CC and hard CC. We looked at some soft CC when we reviewed conditions, but you may not have realized it. Soft CCs are conditions like blinded, chilled, crippled, immobile, slow, and weakness. Those conditions allow the player to still act in some way, but it impairs their action. Chilled and crippled reduce movement speed, immobile allows you to attack but not move, slow made your skills slower, etc. All six of those conditions impede your ability or movement in some way, but don't completely lock down your character. And that's what you need to think when you're thinking about soft CCs. They're annoying, but it doesn't make the target useless. Hard CCs go a step further and really impair the target's chances to do anything. First, all hard CCs will do an interrupt on the target's current ability. If you have a target casting a spell and then you hit them with a hard CC, the action is interrupted and put on a 5 second cooldown. This means hard CCs are a way to counter an attack by stopping it from ever being activated in the first place. Secondly, a hard CC will typically affect the target's movement for a short period of time, normally by causing the target to involuntarily move in some way. There are two conditions that we covered in the last video which count as hard CCs. That's Taunt, which causes the target to run at the caster, and Fear, which causes the target to run away from the caster. While conditions are visually represented as a red arrow in the UI that points down, the hard CC effects are simple beige squares with a white icon in them. There are several other hard CC though, so let's go over those. Daze disables all skills for a short time. Stun prevents movement and actions for a short time. Knockdown will force the target to the ground, knocking them on their back or their stomach, preventing movement and actions for a short time. Pull will pull the target to the caster's location, disabling the target for a short time. Knockback will push the target away from the caster's location, disabling the target for a short time. And Launch will throw the target into the air for a short distance, preventing movement and actions for a short time. Each of these effects will stop movement or forcefully move the target in some way. The last three, Pull, Knockback, and Launch, can actually move people off a cliff, similar to how we saw my guildmate get run off a cliff from Fear in the previous video. Players that get knocked off cliffs are susceptible to fall damage, so be mindful of your positioning when you're fighting a player or enemy that has some of these hard CC effects. There is a good amount of underwater combat in Guild Wars 2, and the underwater combat is actually pretty decent, so it makes sense that there would be some CCs that are found mostly underwater. The first is Sink, which causes the target to move downward. And the most creative use of sync that I've heard of is in World vs. World, when you can sink a player to the bottom of the water to keep them from reaching the surface when they're drowning, but I don't play a lot of World vs. World, so I haven't personally seen that, but it sounds pretty funny. The second is Float, which I'm sure your brilliant mind has already deduced will cause the target to float. Float is used in a number of different ways. Some professions can cast float on themselves, allowing them to move more quickly to the surface of the water when they're drowning. The Elementalist can use the Trident's air bubble attack to cast float on targets, controlling their movement underwater and forcing them to take damage for every second that they're floating. And the Chronomancer, a Heart of Thorns elite specialization for the Mesmer, can cast Gravity Well, which causes targets to float outside of the water by manipulating gravity, pulling targets toward the middle of the well and raising them in the air while they take damage. The usage of crowd control effects will depend largely on what you're doing. We're going to look at how crowd control works in normal PvE content, first with how it can be useful for open world content, how some events handle CC a little differently, and then we're going to move into the defiance bar. 
Normal, veteran, and elite enemies, and less commonly champions, that you find in the open world are easily susceptible to almost all forms of hard and soft CC. I say almost all because occasionally you'll encounter a foe that is immune to certain conditions or effects. Regardless, you should think of ways to effectively use CCs against your targets in different situations. One of the best defenses in Guild Wars 2 is your character positioning and evasion, so your first use of CC could be to slow or stop your targets while you use skills to build distance between you and your attackers. If they're not able to hit you, then you're probably not going to die. Conversely, if your enemy is trying to escape or get out of range, you can use CC effects to slow, stun, or even pull them back to your location. Another use of CC is to outright cancel an attack. Remember I said hard CCs also perform an interrupt? If you see your target is charging an attack, you can cancel that attack. This is a great way to keep your target from using that skill for 5 seconds. Also, rely on your interrupts if you don't have any endurance for a dodge, since an interrupted skill is one that you don't have to move away from. Another use of CC in PvE content is when you need to defend an NPC. If your enemies get too close to the NPC, you can use knockback, launch, or pull to keep the enemies away, sparing your NPC for a little while longer while you continue to beat on your targets. Likewise, when you find one of those events where you have to defend a point from waves of enemies, you can use knockback, launch, and pull to keep the enemies outside that defensive area, giving you and your allies a little bit more control of that space. Those were all pretty straightforward uses of CC, and as you play through events and even instanced content in PvP, you'll learn many more ways that you can effectively use your CC abilities. Some events in the game require players to use your CC in different ways though, not as a way to slow or stun your enemies, but rather for specific mechanics during a fight. One such fight is during the Battle for Tarir at the Southern Gate in Auric Basin, a Heart of Thorns map. During this event, a bomb will spawn, and players need to assist in moving the bomb across a plaza before it takes too much damage and explodes prematurely. Players can move the bomb by using skills that pull and knock back, Ideally, you want to position yourself behind the bomb and push it toward the Octavine Gate, pushing it out of the way of hazards as you're going. Not all events have mechanics that require creative uses of CCs, so don't be afraid to ask in map chat if there's something that you need to know about. And if you do know of mechanics, don't be afraid to volunteer that information even if no one asked because there's probably somebody that needs to hear it. If you guys and gals know of other events like the Southern Tarir Gate, please leave them in the comments below. I'm drawing a blank on other non-traditional uses of CC in events. This is one of the most important things in the game, so listen up. When we start fighting some veteran, champion, and legendary creatures, we're introduced to a mechanic called the Defiance Bar. The Defiance Bar, or sometimes known as a Break Bar, is another bar that appears directly below the target's health, and it shows how much Defiance the target has. While a normal health bar takes damage from offensive abilities, your Defiance Bar will take damage from crowd control effects that you apply to your target, but only during certain states. The Defiance Bar can be in one of three different states, locked, open, or broken. Some enemies can have a locked Defiance Bar, and it appears as a dark gray bar beneath the health bar. When the bar is locked, any crowd control effects are useless. Nothing much you can do about it, so save your CCs if you can. If you encounter a locked bar, at certain points during the fight, the Defiance Bar will switch to an open state and turn blue. The open state could occur because of an internal timer, the enemy hits a certain percentage of health, the enemy is charging a certain skill, or because some other condition is met, and the bar could be permanently open or temporarily open, giving the players a short or a large window to break it. And when I say break it, I mean do enough damage to the bar. So when you see people say break the bar or refer to the defiance bars as break bars, this is why. During the open state, in most cases, players will want to use your CC abilities to deplete the Defiance Bar as quickly as possible. If players do not break the Defiance Bar fast enough, it'll stay blue and start to regenerate, but this can be cancelled with more CC effects, or even lock itself again. The third state is broken, and during this state, the bar will turn tan and start to recharge. During this time, the enemy is once again immune to CC effects, so hold off and save your CCs if the bar is near the end of its recharge period. When the bar fully recharges, it might go back into an open or locked state. It depends on the encounter, really. You may be wondering why players want to break the bar, though. 
In many encounters, breaking the bar will cause whatever abilities the enemy is casting to be interrupted and cause the enemy to be hit with a CC effect like stun, daze, or knockdown. In other encounters, breaking the bar simply cancels an attack or an effect, like removing a shield or canceling a powerful spell from being cast. There are many examples of this in the game, but one tied to some achievements are with the Shatterer and the Blaze Ridge Steeps. When the Shatterer prepares his Shard Storm attack, his break bar will open up and players, using their gliders, can float overhead and drop bombs on him to break the bar quickly. If you successfully break the bar, the Shatterer stays grounded and never casts his spell, and you earn some progress toward two different achievements. There is also a period where the Shatterer will summon healing crystals, which start healing the Shatterer and you need to use CC to destroy those too. There are loads of events in this game that employ skill cancelling mechanics. Another example of break bars being used for more than just cancelling an effect, and since Winter's Day just ended so this is still fresh in my mind, is during the Freezy fight. After getting one of Freezy's icy protectors down to 1% health, the Defiance Bar opens up and the protector no longer takes damage from player attacks. Instead, to deal the finishing blow, players will have to break the protector's Defiance Bar. The Leyline Anomaly is another event where players have to punish a legendary energy creature for running naked through the park. There's no streaking allowed here, boys. Breaking his Defiance Bar will cause him to cower in place and start to absorb Leyline Magic, which after a minute or so of cowering, will give players a brief window to start dealing damage to him. Aside from interrupting abilities and stunning enemies, often the enemy will also receive an exposed effect, causing them to take 50% more damage for a short duration. One thing I learned while making this video is if you mouse over the Defiance Bar, it will also give you a little bit more information about the Defiance Bar and what happens when it's broken. Something you might want to play around with next time you see a Defiance Bar on one of your foes. In almost all cases, it is beneficial for players to break the Defiance Bar as quickly as possible. There are some exceptions though. During the fight against the Mouth of Mordremoth, there is an attack where the Mouth will bite onto one of the floating islands that the players are on. During this attack, players will wait until the third bite to apply their CC, maximizing damage dealt to Mordremoth before he destroys the island. The community is pretty good about saying in chat to wait or CC now, so just kind of keep an eye on that until you learn the encounter. Another great example is during the Chalk Garant meta event. Three of the four Chalk Garants will unleash an attack where rocks are going to fall from the ceiling, and during this attack, the break bar is open. Some players might think, oh my god, death is landing on my head, I better break that bar to stop it, but don't be so hasty. A common strategy players employ is to leave the break bar open, because the Garant is stationary during the attack, allowing players to deal damage a little bit easier. The flip side now is that players have to deal with falling rocks, requiring a little bit more mobility during the fight, but you're dodging and attacking a stationary target, so it's actually a bit easier to delay breaking the bar. Again, there are several fights like this in the game. If you can think of others, leave a comment below, and I'll end up pinning all of those for the other viewers. So the next question we have to answer is how much defiance do defiance bars have, and what's the most efficient way to break them? It's actually a really hard question for me to answer. Each defiance bar is slightly different since they have different levels of defiance for different enemies. Some of the defiance bars will actually scale upward in defiance based on the number of players engaged in the fight, so the more people would require more CC, but less individual CC overall. And even for the defiance bars that do scale upward, not all of them scale the same way. It's just really hard to know how much defiance a bar has because of all the different variables involved. It really depends on the encounter and how many people are playing. Fortunately, it's a bit easier to understand how your individual skills and abilities will affect the Defiance Bars differently. Soft CCs and some hard CCs deal damage to the Defiance Bar over time, but they deal different levels of damage. Immobile and Slow deal 50 damage per second. Chilled will deal 33 damage per second. Blinded and Weakness deal 20 damage per second, and Crippled will deal 15 damage per second. The two hard CCs that deal damage over time are Fear and Taunt. Fear will deal 100 damage per second, and Taunt deals 75 damage per second. Each of these conditions can be affected by your Condition Duration attribute, which we covered in the first video. So a 2 second immobile, which would normally deal 100 damage to a Defiance Bar, could actually be increased to 150 damage over 3 seconds, or more if you stack your attributes right. While the duration can increase, the soft CCs are not affected by condition damage attributes. These conditions are normally non-damage dealing conditions anyway, so why would we increase their damage? The other hard CCs deal bursts of damage instead of damage over time. 
For days, stun, knockdown, and float, you simply have to multiply the duration of the effect by 100 to get the total damage dealt. If any of your skill effects last less than 1 second, then use 1 second for the equation, since all hard CC will deal a minimum of 100 damage. For these effects, you'll also want to factor in any duration increases from traits and whatnot. Knockback and Pool are just flat 150 damage to the Defiance bar, that's it. And Launch is going to deal just over 200 and 300 damage, depending on which skill is used. There's a really good table that breaks all of this down in a more clear way, on the Defiance Bar wiki page. Type slash wiki defiance bar hashtag skill details into the chat window to go straight to the table or visit the defiance bar page. The skill details table will show you all the different skills and which effects they apply and how much damage they do over what amount of time. All CCs can be countered either proactively or reactively. Reactively countering a crowd control effect requires the player to execute some skill after the CC has been applied. All the soft CCs, as well as Fear and Taunt, can be countered with cleansing abilities that remove or transfer conditions from the player. Hard CCs cannot be cleansed though. Instead, they have to be cancelled by skills that are considered stun breakers. Every profession in the game has access to a few stun break abilities, and some elite specializations give even more stun breaking options. The stun break effect is normally found on a skill tooltip, and it is represented by a beige square with a white broken chain icon, with the words break stun beside it. There are also descriptions that will say break stun in them too. A lot of the hard CCs only apply their control effect for a few seconds to a fraction of a second, so to effectively cancel the control, you're going to want to have this skill keybound and have a really twitchy reflex. Some of you may recall that we talked about a boon in the last video that I said had a great description. That boon was stability. It prevents new control effects from being applied to you, and that is why I consider it a proactive counter. You put it on before the crowd control effect hits you. Stability doesn't remove existing control effects, but there are many skills that grant stability and also trigger a stun break. One such example is the Engineer's Elixir U, which grants two stacks of stability for six seconds, along with quickness and vigor, and it also breaks stuns. It's a great, oh crap, I need to get out of here skill. Another example is the Guardian's Stand Your Ground Shout, which grants 10 targets within 600 units of you five stacks of stability and also breaks more stuns. While you're running around in world versus world or structured PvP, being able to keep some stability on your team is super useful when you're on the move, and Stand Your Ground is one option to help with that. Again, in the next video, we'll be looking at how to interpret your skills a bit more so you can easily identify these stun break skills on your own. I'm not sure what more I can say about crowd control effects. In this video, we covered what crowd control effects are and the different types, the differences between soft and hard control effects, how control effects can be used in PvE content, explain the defiance bar and how you want to quickly deal with it, and mention some situations where you want to be a little slower, and lastly, how to counter control effects. I think the community, as a whole, will have a better time playing through content if more people understand these mechanics, so please, share this video with new players or casuals who haven't a clue. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you're alerted about the next videos which are going to be all about learning skills, understanding your skills, and the different skill types that are in the game, and which professions and specializations can use those skill types. Lastly, leave a comment if you have something more to add. Which events need less CC, which events have bomb pushing mechanics, how to better counter CC, or whatever else you think that I may have missed. Like I said, I'll pin your comments and probably mention them in the next video too. So as always, thanks for watching guys, until next time.